I'm Judge Abner Mikva, and you're watching Tape with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. Shalom and welcome to Tape with Rabbi Doug. I am here today with uh, Kerry Berman, he is an author, Akiva Mayer, also known as. That's right. Um, so, uh, Kerry is um, an amazing person. He is a survivor of Tay Sachs, and um, his story is not only amazing, but it's really a miracle. And um, Kerry is thankful to God every day of his life. Um, he has written a book called Genesis, Born with tay -Sachs, but it's really living with tay -Sachs, as right. he says. And uh, Carrie M. Berman, uh, Akiva Mayer, you are uh, one amazing person. Tell me, first of all, before we get into your story, what made you think about the idea of writing a book? Actually, the idea of writing the book came through my wife, who's a light of my life, and actually her, she's born on the 8th day of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah, honey. Anyway, she said, Carrie, I'm sick of hearing stories. Why don't you write a book? So I wrote a book, and, it, it, and she says, there's so many stories. She says, I'm sick of hearing it. Just write a book. Okay, what, why don't you tell our viewers, for those who aren't familiar with tay -Sachs, Right. Um, I, I think it's very important that they understand what tay -Sachs is, how it affects a person, and what the lifespan normally of a person with Tay-Sachs, okay. and when is it usually diagnosed? Those kind of right. questions and answers. Well, what I, I have something called late onset Tay-Sachs, and that's a very rare form of Tay-Sachs. Um, infantile Tay-Sachs is terminal. It's usually, usually what it is is fats in the brain. They accumulate in the brain, and they get so great there's no enzyme to dissipate them, so they accumulate. They attack the central nervous system, and usually by age three or four, uh, it's disease is terminal. Um, therefore, and mine is not terminal. Mine, mine is the same idea. Fats accumulate in the brain, and they attack the central nervous system. However, I have 10% of this enzyme. Infants have none of this enzyme, so mine is not terminal. Mine is neurodegenerative. And how I found out about this was in 1985. I took a screening test, they say a screening test. Can I ask you how old you were at that time? I was about 21 okay. at the time to see if I was a carrier for this disease because they want to wipe it out. It's a horrible, horrible disease. So this, this was just by chance you took this test? Yes, this is by chance. I just want to see if I was a carrier for Tay-Sachs. Like, and it is a genetic disease it that's is passed down it from is generation, is generation to it generation. Is. It is. So I took it, and... I got a call about two weeks later. I got a note from the geneticist at the University of Illinois. He said, I've never seen such a result in my life. It looks like you have Tay-Sachs, but you can't have Tay-Sachs, you'd be dead. And I said, doctor, I pinched my hand. I said, I think I'm alive. So he did it again. And he said, Mr. Berman, we have to do it again. I did it again, and it showed again I have Tay-Sachs. So he says, I'm very confused because you wouldn't be alive if you had Tay-Sachs. So, he says, I'll, I'll give you some advice. If you get married and have a child, if you have a child, test them a certain way, the way I'm going to tell you. Otherwise, it's going to show your kid has tay -Sachs. And it might not. And I think the, the consequences are very dire. Can I, can I ask sure. you just a question before sure. you go on? And I sure. do want to continue. Sure. Do both parents have to have the gene for a child to carry it yes, it is. And, yeah. and get the disease. If one parent has the gene, it can be passed down, but it, you will not get the disease unless both parents are carriers? That's correct. Uh -huh. That's correct. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And thank God, Baruch Hashem, thank God, one of my parents had Lance and tay -Sachs and one had infantile tay because if they both had infantile tay -Sachs, I wouldn't be taping the show. I wouldn't uh -huh. be around. Um, they both had the genes. They, they didn't have the disease. They had the they, genes. They had the genes. That's uh -huh. correct. Uh -huh. That's correct. Um, so, so what happened, um, so they, they believe I did not have tay -Sachs after this. I had something, a recessive gene that made it look like I have tay -Sachs, but I don't. The doctors are confused. So in my book, I, came, I don't believe in coincidence. And it's funny, this is, we're taping this on, on eve of Hanukkah, Day of Miracles, and this, I think it's been a miracle in my life. I go to a, a, 
uh, a fair in Pebbleton, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And I go there, and there was someone I wanted to speak, and there was a lady in a wheelchair, and look, she had MS or MD. And uh, I said, I started, had a conversation with her, and she said, I have something called late onset T6, which is just like in Pebbleton, T6, only instead of 0% of the enzyme, I have 10%. Similar to what you have. Right. Uh-huh. And I, I had an epiphany at that point. I said, that's what I have. And when I found out, that it was confirmed that's what I have, and they can confirm this through a blood test. I'll show you how much of this enzyme, called a hexa enzyme, you have. I was one of 250 in the world who have, have this, the onset taste of X. Um, a lot of times it's misdiagnosed because a lot of times it has symptoms of MS or, MNA, or muscular dystrophy. It looks like uh -huh. that, even though it's the onset taste of X. And even though we're very small in number, so drug companies do not like us, or there's no money in research in our disease, geneticists love it because they could find a cure for this. They could apply it to larger diseases like MS or, or Parkinson's mm -hmm. or MD. So it can have huge importance. So wow. It, wow. I'd, I'd say the miracle of this happens on, on Hanukkah. And every day I say, Modani, I thank God because and do these, I've learned life is most important, and every day I appreciate life every day. So, so let me ask you now, when you were 21, you got tested by chance. Right. Um, when did you first start showing some kind of symptoms that, that, that you got more concerned as you went along? I really know symptoms at that time. Now, some of the mood changes and some of the things that, because uh, taste acts, it has physical, I guess it has physical, it also has psychiatric and 50% of the cases. Because it affects your brain. The brain, that's right, it's in the brain. So manic depression. Uh -huh. um, later when I found out, I've had times, I've been a public defender for 27 years. I won the first case in Illinois, for my first assignment in a murder case. Um, I've had to retire, because there was a while when I was walking like a 90-year-old man. Uh -huh. and, uh, because of the taste acts. Because of the taste acts. Uh -huh. uh, my, my brain was not, not functioning. Um, it was going so quick at one point, that I lost 20 pounds in one month. Mm -hmm. um, God forbid I look like a Holocaust victim, God forbid. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Now, because I, I'm feeling well, and I attribute it, I come to Davin, I pray, I go to the mikvah every day, and I say what it's given me in my life is a connection to Hashem, also balance in my life. Mm -hmm. I think balance is the key, and my life well, is balanced. Well, I've known you for a long time, and I've seen improvement in your uh, uh, appearance and, 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 and conversation and so on and so forth from the first time I met you. So I know that you've gotten better. And it's, it's unusual for people to get better, right? It's usually a slow decline when it affects you. Yes, you either stay the same or you get worse. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. There's people who have the onset TCX, a lot of them are in wheelchairs. Um, at first they have problems uh, like going in and jumping and later on in life they're in wheelchairs or canes. Uh -huh. um, I, I just thank God. Um, yeah, it's it's just amazing, just yeah. amazing. So tell me now, when we when we go into the book, um, you first well, of well, all the first thing on the book, I, I have a leaf on the book, uh -huh. and a leaf uh -huh. is very important to me because I've learned a leaf. God controls everything, even the falling of a leaf. That's why I put leaves on the uh -huh. book. Ah, very very interesting, very interesting. Um, you talk about the explanation of of the book of of Tay Sachs. Um, you talk about the fact that this is that this is nonfiction, that this is this is a real life experience of yours. Right. Uh, what what do you think that uh, um, people who have late uh, onset of Tay Sachs do, do you think that many of them will look to your book for for support and for um, uh, encouragement? I think we all support each other because there's few in number. We have an answer to taste sex, and they're, they're wonderful, absolutely wonderful. The ones I've met have a very positive attitude, and I've learned in life for some things we can control and some things we can't control. And um, they've been very motivational to me, and some are worse than others. I, I am very lucky. I had a, a friend of mine, she's about the same age, mm -hmm. but she was the youngest one in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, she passed away. Mm -hmm. Her beautiful soul will always be with me. I have a tribute to her in the book. Uh -huh. that, um, but uh, now I, um, it, it, it's just um, the disease made me appreciate. I think it's appreciation. 
And a lot of times we say what we don't have, and I appreciate what I do have. And I've seen, and you've noticed I went all beyond uh -huh. at work, in fact. Um, I came back, I decided not to work anymore, not because I couldn't. Thank God I'm feeling well enough to I decided, I talked with my wife and decided that let's start a new chapter in my life, maybe this book, and start doing this uh -huh. will be my new chapter in my life. So you go around and, and you've, you've talked about Tay-Sachs and about your survival with, with this disease. Uh, are there support groups for people, and you said there's only 250 people that have, uh, that, that are known of, that have right. the same exact symptoms as you in disease. Are, are, are there support groups for people with Tay-Sachs? Yeah, there's the National Tay-Sachs Association, the N -S -N -T -S -A -D, mm -hmm. which is, when a lot of them are basically support groups for families or parents because children usually don't last a long right. time. Right. So that's that's why I chant I go living with Tay Sachs because I want people to understand that I was born with it, but I'm living. Unfortunately, a lot of them with infantile are not living anymore, and this book is done by a parent or a caretaker. I want them to know this is written by me. Now you've you know? you've become very involved in the Jewish community as you got older. You, uh, you go to synagogue on a regular basis, you go to the mikvah, the ritual, the ritual immersion on a regular basis, and uh, you attend services on a regular basis, uh, observe Shabbat and things like this. I, my question is, when you were growing up, did you have this strong connection to Judaism or did this come along later in life? Later in life. Later in life. What brought you, uh, was, was it your, your your thankfulness to God for your for your survival. What brought you back to becoming more involved in your Jewish heritage right. and observance um, from from what it was when you were growing up? Well, someone, my name is Akiva, and someone told me Rabbi Akiva, his teacher taught him everything is for the good. So I went to the person. And I said, How could it be good when I'm walking like a 90 year old man? And I just realized that there's a dichotomy. There's God, who's the creator, and He's bound, not bound by time, and there's also our creations, we are bound by time. And I think this disease ultimately was for the good because I'll be closer to God. And even though at the time it, it was not good, ultimately it was good. And I'm just thinking, all my devotion, I'm really realizing going through this process, I think is a blessing because I found out who the ultimate healer is, who the really ultimate healer is. Because I've done, which is absolutely wrong, and I apologize, but part of this process, I, I told some of the doctors I was taking medication when I was not taking medication. Actually, I was getting worse. But you know, I'm sorry, for a while I was getting better. And they attributed it all to the medication. Mm -hmm. And when they found out I was not doing it, which was wrong on my part, you have to be honest with your doctor. Sure. But I just realized above is the ultimate doctor, and I think this whole procedure is, is for that. And I just feel better. When I come, I'm, I'm helping out, I'm helping myself. And I noticed when I don't do it, there's repercussions, and they're not good. Uh, did so. you go through periods of, um, of experimental drugs and trying different things that weren't working? And are you taking medicine right now that is working and helping, or is it not making a difference? Tell us about that. I'm taking eight B vitamins. Vitamins are good for the nerves. B vitamins are good for the nerves. And I am taking a tiny, like an aspirin. Uh -huh. um, it's called the Bilify. I'm taking that. When I was taking more, I was getting worse. Uh -huh. And there's a doctor who did a study. Uh, she's now at Cleveland Clinic. She used to be at Harvard. That certain medications actually make this condition worse. And I had every side effect. And I'm not saying medications are bad. I'm saying for me, uh -huh. they were bad. And maybe I had to realize this lesson. I believe, just like I put it in the book, everything in life is a lesson. Mm -hmm. And this is my lesson. And that's why I think it could help everybody. So everyone has a challenge in their life, whether it be physical, medical, financial, familial, or something else. Everyone has a challenge. And your challenge is not mine and vice versa. So I think these lessons, this was a lesson. And I believe that if you do not learn your lesson, you'll come back in another factual context until you learn your lesson. Either learn it the easy way or the hard way. It's your choice. So you're a lawyer. You went to law school. Right. Uh, where did you go to law school? I went to John Marshall. You went to John Marshall's a great school. You're, you're a lawyer. Went to law school. Did you ever think that somewhere along the way, um, because people think this way, but you as 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 a lawyer, did you think along the way that somebody did you wrong and that you wanted to 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 pursue something legally, 
ever, or did you really come into saying this is this is my um, no, mission in life and this is my destiny in life? Well, I, I, my only job in life and my legal career has been in public Cook County Public Defender, and law school. I think Chandler is a very fine law school, but I, I have an interesting dichotomy in my life because of this condition. I barely got through law school. I couldn't think, and and I barely got through. I, I got into a conditional program. I worked my way on to the law school. I barely graduated. Yet I won the first case in Illinois, my first assignment. And in fact, it's all funny. I, I had problems. I became a black belt in karate. Um, I'm kind of, when they told me in the first case, they said, no one is one carry. Um, try it. I compare, I believe water. I, I love water. So I took a glass of water to the public court and said, a trial is like a glass of water, it's gotta be clean. And I said, I do not support discrimination. I said, I'm Jewish, uh, and I said, in my religion, discrimination is not kosher. So I, I won, I was the first case in Illinois to win, and I got a new trial for the, the client. So it was interesting because when they say you can't do something, I wanted to do it. So just, just, just like this, I've had my difficult times, I've never, I've been upset, but uh, I've always looked at it as motivational, and uh, motivational, and I'm kind of, this is, I'm helping it, it's helping me, because I feel it's a chief balance in my life, so. Just amazing, just amazing. I'm here with uh, Kerry Berman. Um, we are talking about his book, Genesis, Born with Tay-Sachs, or as he says, Living with Tay-Sachs. Um, and uh, we're here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Tay-Sachs and Canavan are two diseases that are fatal to infants and young children, but they can be prevented. Every person of Jewish heritage is at risk of passing on the fatal Canavan and Tay-Sachs genes to the next generation. People of Irish heritage are also at risk of being carriers of Tay-Sachs. Simple blood tests will tell you if you are a carrier. Log on to taysachs.org for more information. Remember, Tay-Sachs and Canavan diseases can be prevented. Don't make your next baby a sitting duck. Welcome back. I'm here with Kerry Berman. We are um, talking about his book, uh, Genesis, Born with Tay-Sachs. Uh, Kerry, uh, uh, Akiva Mayer, as you like to be called you're by your Jewish name, um, what, what do you think, in, in writing your book, what is your favorite story from the book to tell people? What is really, uh, I know you have a lot of people that you talk about in the book, a lot of people that have had a lot of meaning in your life. We could talk more about that. But what's your favorite story in the book? What do you think really uh, touches you the closest? Well, there's so many, but one, I believe there's no coincidence in life, Rabbi. And um, I went to a wedding in Seattle, Washington for a first cousin. And I go there, and my aunt goes, have you seen your cousin? Bobby, she's giving a lecture at REI, sports store. I have not seen her in 25 years. So I go there, and I say, is Miss Benzman here? And her cousin Carrie from Chicago is here. She comes out, gives me a hug. And I find out that my cousin is one of the top rock climbers in the world. And she says, Carrie, she calls me the Care Bear. Care Bear, you want to learn how to rock climb in Thailand? And I'm afraid of heights. So I told her, that's okay. You know, I, I appreciate the offer, but, you know, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, but she's very motivational. And by the end of the conversation, at the end of dinner, I was going to Thailand. So I went to Thailand. And it happened to be, not only Thailand, it was the anniversary of the King, King's anniversary. So the whole palace was lit up. So we get there, she goes, Carrie, Thailand has some of the nicest hotels in the world. We're not staying in it. Um, we stayed in six dollar a night grass huts with monkeys running in them. And finally we went to rock climbing and we came for what we came to do. She came to do it, I didn't come to do it. But she said, Carrie, I know how to motivate you. You want to tell your friends about this and take pictures, I will not do that unless you get 100 feet in the air. So um, there I learned a lesson about mental strength. I did it the first time, it took me 10 minutes to get 100 feet, and I was schwitzing, I was perspiring heavily. I came down, she said, Carrie, that's good for practice, now go up again. I thought, thank God I'm done. I went up, and this time I said, you know what, if it's my time, it's my time, I'm gonna I trust my cousin, I'm gonna do it. I did it in three, three minutes instead of ten, which tells me, because physically I was in the same shape I was in before. And mentally, it was all mental. And I, I, just like I think this disease, a lot of it has physical repercussions, but it's all mental. 
And it really got me thinking that a lot of times in life, people look at symptoms and they address symptoms, they, they get an aspirin, they do a cover up, but let's get to the causes. And when I looked at the cause, my cause here, I believe the whole thing was, I had to find out who the ultimate healer is. And that's why I will not go to a doctor. Doctors are wonderful. I will not go to a doctor who thinks I am the one who healed you. He had license to heal above Hashem heals. That's what I learned. I believe this whole experience was a lesson. And so you, you really, you really look to Hashem. You look to God oh, uh, as to as as the the one that has made the difference in your being the survivor and getting better than you were when you were when you were the really main difference. Forcing. I mean, you were sicker. We all need in that, in that context. We need a support system. My family, my friends, they all all races and religions were there to support me. And um, but I think ultimately this lesson, this big lesson I had to learn, and some don't learn a lesson, and I believe it comes back in another context. But I believe I had to learn who the ultimate healer is. And doing that, I'm helping, helping out, and I feel the biggest thing in my life is attaining balance. And I think when I say the mikvah, I have the main thing, you do it for the holidays, I feel I'm maintaining balance, I'm getting balance. And it's been amazing, and I think everyone in life, we have stories, we all have challenges, and that's why I look at this as kind of educational. I'm educating doctors, uh, lawyers, um, motivational speaking, but just people. You know, everyone has different challenges. And mine is not yours and vice versa. It's just hopefully this will give them a way, an ethos of a way of dealing with their own challenges. So people who are watching our show, who go out and pick up your book uh, or, or, or buy it online or however they get it, um, and... Uh, they read it. What do you What do you want them to come away with after reading it? I want them to like the story, but also I want them to have a, a way to address their challenges. I've realized we're all in this together, and I've had a wonderful support group. And I've learned also an important lesson was when I was just concerned. The biggest lesson I learned was in the dollar store, and I saw a placard that said the most, the least important word in the world is I, and the most important word is we. I want to help others, I'm getting better myself. Does it make sense? I'm getting better myself. I'm just concerned about myself. Bad things were happening. When I'm concerned about others, let's say, being ninth or tenth in the minion, helping others, helping myself also. Oh. So I think this gave me a, a lot of things. I found who the ultimate healer is, and also made me a lot more concerned about others. Wonderful. And that, that really, so, and, and it really gave me credence to the saying, everything is for the good, I think I finally understood what he's talking about, at least in my context, in my situation. Um, yeah. uh -huh. So, so there's a lot of people you talk about in your book. You 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 name a lot of people. You you have pictures in the book of a lot of people. Uh, tell me, who are the people that have uh, either you've been introduced to or met because of your disease uh, and in your in your studies and in your in your um, uh, quest. Uh, to to identify, uh, you know, your your symptoms and your um, what should I say? What has caused the the disease within you? Who are the people that you've met that really made a difference in your life, uh, or been amazing that you were able to even meet them mm -hmm. just because of your disease? Well, the answer that I just you asked me about chapters I like, and this you know, chapter I'm really proud of. It's very short but it's called road construction. Uh -huh. And I'm saying I'm taking a Jewish road and a lot of sages have taken the road before, but there are numerous roads. Um, I believe, uh, especially now it's timely with what's going on, is we have to get our act together and each travel our road in peace and come together like an integrated highway system. Otherwise there'll be no roads to travel at all. And one of those roads, a good friend at work was Protas, he's from Uganda. and um, when I was very, very sick, and they wanted to get rid of me, and he went to Oxford Law School, he was doing the work for me, and he wouldn't let me fall. And he used to say, Protas, I can't be a lawyer anymore. I forgot everything. He said, Carrie, you're sick. I said, oh, when you come back, he said, you won the first case in Illinois, you're sick. I said, when you feel better, if you can't do it, I'll talk to you. But right now, the main thing is to get better. And I, I thought, I thought, if I worked 12 hours a day, or 13 hours a day, I could do it. 
the bottom line, I make the analogy in the book, it's like a computer that's unplugged. I could, I could work 20 hours a day, nothing is happening. As soon as you plug it, and I, I feel now, now I'm writing a book, I wrote a book, my wife said write a book, I wrote a book. Before, when I was very bad, to give you an idea, I'd spent eight hours, I'd lucky to write a, a sentence. And it was incoherent. And, and it was very frustrating for me, because I wanted to do something, but it's like trying to write on a computer as much as you want, it's not plugged in, it's not working. Now, for all these other things, the computer is plugged in and it's starting to work. So, so tell me, did you have any assistance in writing the book? Did, did you have a ghostwriter? Did you have a, an editor working with you up and back as you went along? How does someone who never wrote a book before, has the difficulties that you've had because of your disease, come along and put together this very complex book with so many stories, so many issues, and so much information about Tay-Sachs? Well, it's actually my book, and actually it's interesting, the book came about, I was on disability from work for about four years, and my wife said, write a book. So I wrote a book. I did more in three months than I did in four years, because like I said before, things were not connecting. I couldn't write. Uh -huh. Now, things were just coming. My problem, you know, updating the book, because my book is not like Harry Potter. It's a fictional book. This is about my life. Now I have a template. Now I'm going to keep on adding stories and using this and getting different, and adding, and adding. Um, so it's always, it's gonna be a living, let's say living, it'll be a living book. And I always add more, my wife said, how can you put this story in? There's so much to put, that I needed a structure to put it in. Now I have a structure, I'm doing this, and as, as things unfold, I'm adding more and more. But no, this is my baby, this is, I wrote this completely myself. So will there be a second edition or a second book? Uh, it'll just be, Updated version. Uh -huh. It's the same book, updated version, just more stories. And uh -huh. I'm refining, keep on refining. I have, finally, it took four years to get this structure because there's so much. Uh -huh. My wife said, Why don't you write this story? I said, There's just too much. I can't you know, write everything. How come you put this story down? Mm -hmm. So, as I get more stories, now I have a structure, now it's easier to add stories. And, um, wow. And, Baruch Hashem, hopefully, I'll, I'll stay well. But I, I understand that. It's a blessing. Good health is a blessing, and I'm just really how appreciative of good health. When you when you only understand good health when you have bad health. Uh -huh. You know, you only understand good when you have evil. Yeah. And hopefully, it will stay well for a long time. Like I say, I don't know. I want to yeah. thank you. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. This is an amazing story. This is Carrie Berman, Genesis, Born with Tay Sachs, his new book, and uh, uh, I want to. Uh, Thank you. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Uh, if you want more information about the book or how uh, how Tay-Sachs works or ask Carrie any questions, you can email us at info at tvrabbi.com. I will forward him the email, and I know he'll give you a personal uh, response. If you want to see this show or other shows on the web after it airs on TV, you can see our website, www.tvrabbi.com. And uh, once again, uh, Carrie Berman, thank you so much for thank being you, on the show. I wish you continued refuah, continued health and healing, you. that you continue to share your message and information to people about Tay-Sachs. And uh, I want to thank all of you for being with us. Hope to see you next time right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. Yeah, I'm talking about Rabbi Doug. Talking about Rabbi Doug. Talking about Rabbi Doug on your TV show. You're gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.